The prison system isn't perfect, and sometimes prisoners escape. Hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel. I'm your host Emily, and today we're counting down our list of the top 10 evil prisoners who are currently on the loose in North America. So keep your eye out for these criminals. Number 10, Frank Morris, John and Clarence Anglin. Alcatraz, the famous island prison a little over a mile off the coast of San Francisco, held prisoners including gangsters Al Capone and George Machine Gun Kelly. Among its other famous inmates were brothers John and Clarence Anglin and Frank Morris, who executed an elaborate escape plan. On June 11, 1962, they pulled off one of the greatest prison escapes in American history. After months of planning, they used three paper mache heads that made them appear to be sleeping as they squeezed through air vents and made their way to the Pacific Ocean, where they boarded a raft they'd made out of stolen raincoats. They were never seen again, and because their raft and paddles washed up ashore, many believe the men drowned in the icy waters. The Anglin family insists the brothers survived and have presented evidence to prove it, and the US Marshal Service has kept the case open in the unlikely event the trio is still alive, according to the FBI. So did they really escape? No one knows except them. Number 9. Victor Fuerga On February 6, 1997, Victor Fuerga, a convict serving 1-4 to four years for possession was supposed to be on the way to the mess hall when he wandered off from the Maria Shock incarceration facility, a minimum security prison in Mineville, New York. It was during a routine phone call with his sister, Yvette Cruz, a few days before his alleged escape that he voiced unrest with his conditions, complaining about a particular guard and an overall feeling of angst. There's a guard who keeps messing with me, look, I have to let you go, Victor shared with his sister before disappearing entirely a few days later. She replied, Poppy, you no, I love you. This is going to end in a few months. Please call me tomorrow. But he never did. As soon as his absence was noted, authorities scoured the area. Searchers examined the surrounding area and found footprints leading to a nearby abandoned mine shaft. They assumed that Victor had fled to the mine to avoid detection and fallen to his death. Further pursuit was halted as conditions in the mine were too dangerous for a thorough search to be performed. All anyone knows for sure is that Victor was never seen or heard from again again, and he's the only New York State prison inmate to escape and never been found. Number 8. Jerry Bergvin Records in his thick prison file show that Jerry Bergen's brushes with the law began in the 1940s. In 1962, he was arrested for breaking to a Flint drug store, pleaded guilty, and was sentenced to 10 to 15 years behind bars on multiple accounts for that burglary and others. Jerry later appealed on a technicality, had trial, and got a reduced sentence. He then wrote letters begging begging to be transferred from the state prison in Jackson to Camp Waterloo so he could attend dental technician training program there. Wary prison officials expressed concerns about his misconduct in prison, but in April 1969 they agreed to the transfer. The camp housed low level offenders and one day he just escaped. Authorities think he may have scaled the barbed wire fence, but it was so long ago that the Michigan Department of Corrections can't say for sure. In 2013, Department of Corrections decided to call off the search for Jerry, who would have been 80 years old at the time, and he's never been found. Number 7. Glenn Stark Chambers Connie Weeks was a 21 year old waitress who was the mother of a toddler son at the time she was dating Glenn. On the morning of January 22, 1975, the couple had an argument that later spiraled into a physical confrontation. Glenn waited for her outside of her work and a her in the parking lot. An off-duty officer intervened and he was arrested. She bailed him out and later that day, he showed up at the hospital carrying her in his arms. She had severe brain trauma and there was blood found throughout the apartment and in Glenn's vehicle. After five days, she was pronounced dead on January 27th. Glenn was convicted of first degree murder on May 29th, 1975 and on July 11th, he was sentenced to death in the electric chair. On February 21st, 1990, while making office furniture, at Florida's Polk Correctional Facility, he convinced other inmates to box him inside a crate and load the crate onto a truck. Somewhere between Polk City and Daytona Beach, Glenn escaped from the back of the truck. When the vehicle did arrive at its destination, his discarded inmate clothing was discovered. Described as intelligent and resourceful, Glenn has family in Minnesota and Florida, and people have reported seeing him in Florida and Alabama, but he is still out there today. Number 6. Glenn Stewart Goodwin In 1980, Glenn Stewart Goodwin was living in Palm Springs, California, and him and his roommate planned to rob a 
dealer and pilot Kim Robert Lavalley, who was once a friend of theirs. They lured Kim back to their condominium where Glenn punched and kicked him, tried to strangle him, then ultimately stabbed Kim 26 times. After the death, the roommates loaded the body onto a truck and set off for the desert. Glenn tried to blow up the evidence by using homemade explosives strapped to the body. On August 3rd, 1980, some Eagle Mountain residents found a blown up pickup truck with remains of a human body inside of it abandoned in the desert. Later, police identified the body and charged Glenn with first degree murder. He was sentenced for the death and robbery to 26 years to life in prison in 1983. In 1987, Glenn escaped the Folsom State Prison in California. He cut a hole through a fence wire and escaped into a storm drain that emptied into the American River. He dropped through a manhole and crawled 750 feet to a raft that he used to float down the river, following painted arrows on rocks that directed him where to go. Later that year, he was arrested for trafficking in Mexico and sent to prison in Guadalajara. In 1991, he allegedly ended the life of a fellow inmate and escaped yet again. He goes by a number of aliases and is believed to be somewhere in Central or South America as of right now, and the FBI is offering a $20,000 reward for information leading to his arrest. Number 5. Omid Nino Tavini Omid Nino Tavini was a kingpin of an organized crime family in Canada, which is connected to various international crime organizations. From 1999 to 2002, he ran a fraudulent telemarketing business that targeted people in the United States, stealing approximately US $3 million from hundreds of victims, most of them the elderly. By 2003, the RCMP recognized Nino as heading up one of the main criminal organizations operating out of an Iranian community in Canada. He was arrested and in 2007, while in custody, Nino walked out of a maximum security prison in Canada's British Columbia wearing a janitor's uniform. He had the assistance of a guard whom he bribed to look the other way. The guard, whom Nino never paid, was prosecuted, but Nino remains an international fugitive. He's also wanted in the United States in connection with his fraudulent telemarketing business. In 2017, Nino, who is now almost 40, may have called the Royal Canadian Mounted Police to negotiate his return to custody in exchange for a promise to not to extradite him to the United States, but authorities have doubt that the call was credible. Number four. Vasilis Polikosis. Vasilis Polikosis is a Greek bank robber and fugitive known as the Greek Robin Hood for his habit of giving away stolen money to the poor. He twice escaped by helicopter from a Greek high security prison while serving a 25 year sentence. He is still free, earning him the nickname of the Uncatchable. While serving a 25 year sentence for kidnapping and robbery, Vasilis managed to escape by helicopter once in 2006 and once in 2009. He hasn't been seen since the 2009 escape in which he and his cellmate climbed up a rope ladder thrown to them from a helicopter flying over the prison yard. It seems that the helicopter had apparently been hijacked by a woman and the cellmate was caught but Vasilis remains at large. The government of Greece faced intense criticism after his second escape from the same facility and the government responded by firing three justice ministry officials and arresting three prison guards. Vasilis is still at large with a 1 million euro bounty placed on him for information leading to his arrest and he could be anywhere in the world. Number 3. George Edward Wright On Friday, November 23, 1962, the day after Thanksgiving, George Wright and three accomplices were involved in the commission of multiple armed robberies. The four suspects first robbed the Sands Motel of $200. They then made their way to a gas station, and during the second robbery, they fatally wounded Walter Patterson, a 42-year-old World War II veteran and Bronze Star recipient. Walter later passed away. George was arrested and subsequently sentenced to 15 to 30 years in prison. On August 22, 1970, George first escaped from a New Jersey prison. He was caught and put back into prison only to escape again in 1972. And then he came up with a plan to avoid being re-imprisoned. On July 31, 1972, George and accomplices hijacked a Delta airplane. After collecting ransom and releasing the passengers, George and his crew flew the plane to Algeres. In 2011, the police caught up with him in Portugal, but since since Portugal has no extradition treaty with the United States, he was released and remains at large. Number 2. Joanne Debra Trissimard Joanne Debra Trissimard is an American political activist who was a member of the Black Libertarian Army. In 1977, she was convicted in the first degree murder of state trooper Werner Forrester during a shootout on the New Jersey Turnpike in 1973. She was sentenced to life in prison and on November 2, 1979, she escaped with the help of a revolutionary group that she was a member.
member of. She escaped the Clinton Correctional Facility for Women in New Jersey when three members of the Black Liberation Army visiting her drew concealed weapons and a stick of dynamite, seized two correction officers as hostages, commandeered a van, and made their escape. No one was injured during the prison break, including the officers held hostage who were left in a parking lot. According to later court testimony, she lived in Pittsburgh until August 1980 when she flew to the Bahamas. The FBI continues to offer a $1 million reward for information leading to catching Joanne. She has been living in Cuba, where she was granted political asylum in 1984. And coming in at number one is Sharon Kin. Sharon Kin ended the lives of three people in the 1960s. The first was her own husband, James Kin, the second, Patricia Jones, the wife of a man whom Sharon was having an affair, and the third was a Mexican born American citizen whose life was taken in Mexico. She was serving 13 years in a Mexican prison when she escaped on December 7, 1969. She wasn't present for a routine 5 p.m. roll call, and her absence was not officially noted until she also failed to show up at a second roll call later that evening. A manhunt was then arranged, initially focusing on northern Mexican states due to authorities' belief that Sharon may have been heading for the last known whereabouts of a former inmate whom she had grown close to while they were in prison together. The search also encompassed countrywide transport hubs and eventually circled back to the Mexico City area. US authorities, including the FBI, were also alerted of the Mexican authorities' beliefs that Sharon may have attempted to work her way back into her native country. As of 2022, she is the subject of the longest currently outstanding arrest warrant for murder in the history of Kansas City, Missouri, and one of the longest outstanding felony warrants in US history. Well, that's all for our list of the top 10 evil prisoners who are currently on the loose in North America. Which escape do you think is the best? Let us know in the comments down below and make sure to give us a big thumbs up if you like this video. I'm your host Emily and I'll see you next time. Peace.